Oh. So I'm going to have to use a real Bible. Oh, my goodness. Bring the charger with you. I didn't bring the charger. No, I didn't. It wouldn't charge the compass for the rest of the service. Anyway. <laughs> Turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. We'll start with verse 16. If you have a red letter edition, this will be in red. Matthew 5, 16. Matthew was a tax collector before he became a disciple of Jesus and then apostle. And Jesus said this, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. In other words, we're to live before people like we're walking in the light so that we would produce good fruits, yes. good works, Thank you, so Lord. that they would see the power of God in our life, that he's delivered us from the old, old man, the Amen. old man's sin. Thank you, Lord. So we should let our light shine. How do you do that? By walking in good works. Then people will glorify Father God for what he's done in our lives. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Jesus did not come to wipe out the law or destroy the law. God never, ever has changed. God has always been the same from the beginning of time till now, and he will always be the same for all of eternity. Amen. Because it's impossible you, for God to change. God cannot change. And God cannot lie. We, if we really know that and we really have that in our heart, then it becomes easier for us to have faith in God. Mm -hmm. If he cannot lie, if he cannot change, then it gets easy for us to believe God. Yeah. Well, God said it. Amen. So I can believe it. Thank because you. God said it. Yes. For verily I say unto you, tell heaven and earth shall pass, not one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. I used to think jot and tittles were like little punctuation marks, but I found out that jot and tittles were like the, the Hebrew letters. They had these little swirly things on top, and that's actually what the jot and the tittles were. Because there was no punctuation even invented by, by the time of Jesus. It was several hundred years after Jesus Christ that punctuation was invented. So there was no punctuation in any of the Old Testament or any of the New Testament scriptures. Translators had to add those in the best they could to what they thought was right. And some of those things were they didn't do really right. So we really have to be led by the Holy Ghost as we read the Word. Because God reveals to us, He sent us the Holy Spirit to teach us and to reveal things to us. So we would know the truth. Jesus said, when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will, he will teach you all things. He will teach you all things. And the main, one of the reasons he, things he teaches us and reveals to us is God's word. When I was a teenage kid, I'd already been called to preach, but I was a teenage kid, and there was something in the scripture I didn't understand. I just asked the Lord to reveal it to me by the Holy Spirit, and God would always show me by the Holy Ghost. It's kind of amazing how the Holy Ghost will do that for you. Amen. But you've got to be sincere. You've got to really be walking with God like you should. And I don't know what you have to do, but I just know that I was, was, and He did. Amen. So if we'll, if we'll do that, and He's no respecter of persons, so He will do it. If He did it for me, He'll do it for you. If He did it for one, He'll do it for another. That's why when we read a, a story in the Bible, like the woman with the, the issue of blood, and she went for 12 years and went to all the doctors and spent all the money she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. And then finally one day, she heard about Jesus. She heard that everybody who touched his clothes was made whole. That's what she heard. So then she said, well, if I can just touch his clothes... I know I'll be made whole too. But she wasn't in faith yet. 
Because faith puts action. Faith doesn't just say it. Faith puts action to yes. it. Yes. So she fought her way through the crowd, and I've heard that the type of disease she had was not legal for her to be in the crowd. But she fought her way through the crowd to get to Jesus, and she grabbed hold of him, and the Bible says immediately she felt in her body that she was made whole. And Jesus immediately, he felt virtue flow out of his body, which was dunamis, miraculous power. He felt miraculous, and he said, who touched me? And there was a throng of people around him touching him. His disciples said, what do you mean who touched you? There's a throng of people around touching you. He said, no, somebody touched me different. He said, I felt virtue flow out of my body. I felt dunamis flow out of my body. Healing power flow out of my body. And so he turned around and he looked and he saw the woman. And she's down there on the ground. And she knew what had happened. And so she told him, the Bible says she told him the whole story. She told him 12 years worth of stuff. I don't know how long it took, but it took a while. And she told him that, and by the time she got done telling him, the man, he, the little girl he was going on his way to heal, heal was already dead. Her, the servant, one of the servants of the, of the guy, he'd come and said, sorry, master, don't bother the master any longer. Your daughter's dead. And then Jesus said, don't fear, don't be afraid, only believe. And then he went and raised the girl from the dead. That's right. Amen. And Jesus can do those things. Yes. And Jesus is in you. Christ is in us. And Jesus said, believers, he said, the same works that I do, shall they do also. And he said, and even greater works than these shall they do. He said, I'm going to my Father. I'm going to send him the Holy Ghost. And they can be led the same anointing that Jesus had. Jesus Christ was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. Yes. Power doing this miraculous power. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Amen. And then Jesus told his disciples. He said, when the Holy Ghost comes, you shall receive power. Dunamis, power. This is the same miraculous power Jesus operated in whenever he healed people, whenever he performed miracles. All the things Jesus operated in in the earth, he did not operate as a son of God. He operated as a man filled with the Holy Ghost. As a child of God, as the first fruits of the resurrection, but, I mean, we're all going to get a new body. We're all going to be, now, the, the resurrection, and like Old Testament saints, this is what I believe. I believe the Old Testament saints were resurrected right after Jesus. Because the Bible says after his resurrection that the, that the graves broke open and they saw many of, of the Old Testament saints walking around the holy city. Yes. That's the city of Jerusalem. So I, then when G, I don't know when they went up. But when they saw Jesus go up, I think it's possible that they'll see us go up when we go. Amen. I don't know. I can't prove that. That's I mean, it's it's like Jesus went up and they saw him go up. So if everybody if everybody saw him go up, why wouldn't they see us go up? Mm -hmm. Anyhow, that's kind of my theory. So I'll just throw that out there. Do with it as you will. Anyhow. So here Jesus said. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth shall pass, not one jot nor till so shall pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. All be fulfilled. Now Jesus came to fulfill part of the law, the law and the prophets, by what he did at Calvary for us. So like they had to do circumcision of the of people's flesh for, ever since Abraham, That's where right. God established it. But God, when Abraham, when God established that with Abraham, he did that as a seal of the faith that Abraham already had. So Abraham had already believed God. He'd already obeyed God. Yes. And because of his obedience to God, God gave him the seal of, of, of circumcision. Now when Jesus came, and his spirit comes into us, then he circumcises us from the inside out. He cuts away the old man of the flesh. Yes. He cuts it away. 
And now we're walking in true holiness and true righteousness through Jesus Christ. He came to not destroy the law, but to fulfill the law so that now you can actually do what the law commands you to do. That's right. Paul talks about in Romans chapter 7 as a man trying to live for God under the law without Jesus. And he says, the things I wanted to do with my mind, I couldn't do. And the things I didn't want to do, I kept finding myself doing. And he goes on, and he's using an allegory as a story to teach you a lesson. And so, so what he did is at the end of the chapter, he said, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He was talking about a person in spiritual death. He said, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He said, only through Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. Only through Jesus Christ. Now, all of the Bible, the New Testament was written in Greek. The Old Testament was written mostly in Hebrew. There's a little bit of Arabic. But all of the scriptures, there was never, there was never, there was never any kind of divisions between chapters and verses or any of that. There's a few, a few in the Hebrew. There's a, a little bit where there's spaces in between some things. But there's no divisions of chapters and verses. That didn't happen until 1,200 and something. The chapters were divided in 1,200 and something, 1,200 years after Jesus. And the verses were added in 1,500 and something, about five or 600 years before, about five, 50 or 60 years before the King James translation came out. So when we read the scriptures, we're, they're not really, by, by scripture, they're really not in chapters and verses. So a lot of things, the way they divided them, makes it harder for us to understand some things. That's why we really need the Holy Ghost to lead us. That's why we need to seek, seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. That's why we need to spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. Yes. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul said, I pray in, the, I pray in tongues which is praying in the Spirit. Because he goes on to say, I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. You see, when he's singing or praying with the Spirit, he don't understand you. I mean, people don't understand you, or you don't understand yourself. Early in the chapter, it says, no man, when you pray in tongues, he says, no man understandeth them, but he's praying to God mysteries. So we're praying to God. They're mysteries to us, but they're not mysteries to God. But, but the Holy Spirit uses our prayers to get God's work done in the earth. In Jude, it says, build up yourself as the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. I really believe that's talking about praying in tongues. Amen. We build ourselves up praying in tongues. Yes. I believe that's why Paul was so strong. He said, I speak with tongues more than ye all. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And he said, I would that you all speak in tongues. However, in the church, when you're ministering in the church, I would rather you prophesy or speak by divine utterance yes. than to speak in tongues, unless there's an interpreter, unless there's an interpretation. You can give it tongues if there's an interpretation. And he said, if, 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 he said, he said, if you give it tongues, he said, pray that you might interpret. That's what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Amen. Hallelujah. I kind of got off there. <laughs> Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least of these commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. You see, there's different degrees of commandments. <clears throat> or why would he say the least? He shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven, but whoso shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness, your righteousness, your righteousness, you know what righteousness is? Now, Strong's Concordance says right standing with God. But what the Word really teaches is the righteousness is doing the things that are right. Now, we, we are accounted righteous as soon as we come to Jesus and make Him Lord of our lives. But we really we have to show a changed life. And the only way we can do that is because Jesus is now in us. When we truly make that commitment from our heart, then God sends the Spirit of His Son, Jesus Christ, into us, into our hearts, and makes us alive unto God, unto Father God. 
the spirit of Jesus. The Bible says Adam was made a life. Adam was made a living soul. But Jesus was made a life-giving spirit, a quickening spirit. And his spirit's able to make our spirits alive as he enters into us. And he's able to reconcile us to his father because he's in the father and his father's in him. Yes. And then when he, Amen. when God sends his spirit into us, Thank you, then we're joined not only to Jesus, but Father God is right there with him that's inside of us. And all the power of God is inside of us. Is inside of us. Yes. We need to learn to walk in what God has placed inside of us. Amen. Thank you. All the light of God is inside of us. We need to be walking in the light. We need to be walking and doing as the Holy Spirit directs us to do and to say, Amen. God will use you if you'll get submitted Thank to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank Humble you. yourselves before the mighty hand of God, and He will lift you up. But don't be lifted up in your in your heart, but be lifted up in the things of God. Yes. Give God all the praise and all the glory. Amen. Why? Because He deserves it all. Right. It's all about Him. Glory. It's all about yes. Jesus. Yes. It's Thank all about you, Father God. You, it's all about the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. You, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Said your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter in to the kingdom of heaven. Let's look at one more scripture, one more portion of scripture. I've got a lot tonight, but we'll get through as much as we can. Turn with me to Colossians chapter 2, we're going to start with verse 9. Now, this is the Apostle Paul writing this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. For in him, that is in him, is talking about Jesus. Yes. If you read above, above, you see it's talking about Jesus. And literally, this word in means a positional thing. I teach this a lot, but we really need to understand this. When we are positionally in Jesus Christ, then dwelleth all the fullness of of the Godhead bodily. That's Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen. It's all dwelled in Christ Jesus. It dwells in us. When we're in Him. When we're in Him, He's in us. It's like a joint thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And ye are complete. Sound complete. complete. Don't ever say you can't do something. You're complete Amen. in Him. Thank you, Lord. You can do all things. Through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can do it all. Yes. He'll strengthen you yes. to do whatever you need to do. Amen. You can do it all. Yes. Just, say, just make sure you say those kind of things. Amen. If you can believe those things in your heart and say them in your mouth with your mouth. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation or deliverance. Amen. So he's saying what God says. Always say what God says. Yes. Never call something that's the devil's yours. That's right. All sickness, disease, infirmities, they all come from the devil. Mm -hmm. So if your body has arthritis in it, it's not yours. It's not yours. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. If your body has pain in it, it's not yours. Amen. It's the devil's. So don't 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 claim it. Don't say this is mine and call it mine. I have these terrible headaches. I have these. Don't say that. Say I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's right. My head does hurt, but it's not mine. There's pain in my head, but it's not mine. I am healed. His healing virtues flowing through me now, making me completely whole from the top of my head to the yes. soles of my feet. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. You, That's Hallelujah. What you That's what you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what you have. Praise, Praise, Praise you, Father. Yes. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all 
principalities and powers. He's over every, every dominion in heaven and earth and under the earth. All authority is under his feet, and we are his body in the earth. Yes. So the, the lowest part of the body of Christ, the lowest member of the body of Christ, the devil is under our feet. Glory Hallelujah. The word of the Bible actually says that God puts Satan under our feet for us to bruise his head. Thank you, Lord. Head of all principalities and powers, in whom also ye are circumcised. That's not talking about physical circumcision. That's right. It's talking about true circumcision. You know, we get baptized in water. You know what happens when you get baptized in water? You get wet. There's no spiritual thing that happens when you get baptized in water. All it is, it's telling a story of what you have already received, Jesus. Right. You've already been baptized into Jesus Christ when you made Jesus Lord of your life. We're immersed into Jesus Christ. Yes. Paul talks about that in Romans chapter 6. We're immersed into Jesus Christ, that the old man of sin, our old sin nature, is destroyed by the power of Jesus. Yes, thank And we are raised up, just like Jesus was raised up from the dead, we are raised up into thank newness Lord. of life. Yes. Yeah. That we can walk not after the old man, because the old man got crucified with Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But now we walk in the new man. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That word in the Greek means creation, like something that never existed before. Thank you. Old things are passed away, and all things have become new. And he wants us to be sanctified, holy, spirit, soul, yes. and body. Thank you. I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body be sanctified unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So that God wants to perfect himself in us till Christ be formed in us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord. <coughs> in whom you are also circumcised with a circumcision made without hands and putting off the old body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. In other words, Jesus comes into us to cut away the old flesh nature. In Romans chapter 8, it says that, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken or make alive your mortal bodies in Christ Jesus. And then it goes on down to say, if you walk after the flesh, you will die. That's not talking about physical death. We're all going to die physically if we live long enough. That's right. We're all going to. It's point once unto man to die, and then the judgment. So we're all going to eventually die unless Jesus comes back within the next 50 years. Because mm -hmm. a lot of us will be dead in 50 years if Jesus don't come back. But I think we're going to be here just a short time. Amen. I believe Jesus is coming soon. Yes. I believe we need to be ready all the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. Amen. All the time. Yes. God wants to, to make you whole. He wants to cut away your old body of sins of your flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Jesus came to do that. That's why, we did, that's why you don't have to get circumcised anymore. Because it's not that circumcision that makes you whole. It's the circumcision of Jesus Christ that cuts away your old fleshly nature. Buried with him in baptism, that's immersion, wherein you are also risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. Yes. Hallelujah. Through the faith of and you being dead in your sins. Notice, when I was in sin, I was dead. Just like Paul was talking about in Romans chapter 7. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? When I was in sin, I was dead. Why? Then the, the last verse in chapter 6 of Romans says, For the wages of sin is death. Yes. But the gift of God is eternal life. Yes, amen. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. That through is like a tunnel. Go through this tunnel to get to something. You gotta go through Jesus to get to eternal life because Jesus is eternal life. There is no eternal life outside of Jesus Christ. We've got to remain in Jesus Christ. 
We've got to abide in Jesus Christ. We've got to keep his commandments. Jesus told some Jews that believed in him. He said, if you continue in my words, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. They thought they were free because they were Abraham's seed. You're not free because of your somewhere way you were born. You're free unless, you, unless you're born again, born of the Spirit. Makes you free. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Verse 13, And you being dead in your sins and the circumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with. Literally in the Greek, that means reanimated co-jointly or made alive, joined together with. In other words, you're joined together with the Spirit of Jesus Christ, and you're made alive because, you're new, because of your union with him. That's exactly what it says in the, in the Greek. You're made alive because of your union with Christ. There is no life outside of Christ. You've got to remain united with Jesus Christ. And 1 John says, how do we know that we abide in him? He said, we keep his commandments. Yes. A man came to Jesus. He said, what do I need to do to, to have eternal life? Jesus said, keep the commandments. He said, which ones? Because there are all kinds of commandments. So he started naming righteous requirements of the law, which we automatically fulfill when we walk in love. That's right. Basically, if you choose to love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and then you love your neighbor as yourself, you treat other people like you should, and walk in love with people, be kind to people, Jesus said when you do that, you fulfill the righteousness of the law. You fulfill the law and the prophets. Amen. Romans chapter 7 in Romans chapter 8, it talks about that if we, by our new nature, we should, we should fulfill the righteousness of the law. The right, that's the righteous requirements of the law. That's right. There are civil and ceremonial things of the law that were just pointing to Jesus, and that's what Jesus fulfilled. It was the civil and ceremonial things that just pointed to what he would do for us. That's why all the Old Testament sacrifices were done away with. That's why the Holy Ghost no longer lives in a temple made with hands. Because now we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. When Jesus hung on the cross, when he hung on the cross, and our sins went on to Jesus Christ, the Bible says the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. The veil of the temple was several inches thick. It was, a, it was a veil that could not be torn. But the veil of the temple was written too from the top to the bottom. And since that day, the Holy Spirit has not dwelt in the temple of God. Yes. Now we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Now the Holy Ghost comes to dwell in us. Thank you, Lord. The presence of God dwells in men now. Yes. That's right. Jesus said, even though John the Baptist was the greatest prophet that ever lived, he said, the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist. In other words, the least Christian is greater than John the Baptist. And he said he was the greatest prophet. He said there was no greater prophet than John the Baptist. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hope we're getting something out of this. Amen. Good. Having forgiven you all trespasses, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. In other words, Jesus destroyed the power of the devil in a believer's life. You, can, you have a full, total authority in the name of Jesus over all the powers of the devil. Amen. By all of the demons, all the miraculous power of the devil, you have total authority in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We, if we need to really understand our authority. And then we need to start exercising our authority. Yes. 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 Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over the, them in it. Let no man, therefore, judge you in meat or food, or in drink, or in the respect of a holy day, or of a new moon, or a Sabbath days, which are just shadows of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ, from the rudiments of the world, why, as though, this is verse 20, wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, 
Are you subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all to perish with the using after the commandments of, and doctrines of men. In other words, he was saying the man-made doctrines that didn't really have anything to do with true righteousness or holiness, those were all nailed to the cross of Christ. They're all nailed to the cross of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now we're free to eat whatever, but just be careful what you eat. It says in, in Proverbs, it says if you go to the king's house to eat, and you're a man given to appetite, be careful about the, his dainties, his foods that are, that are very, you know, sweet and desirous. If you, it says put, put your, a knife to your throat. It actually <laughs> says that. Control yourself. Don Burton actually told me about that scripture. <laughs> that was years ago. But we, we should now, now Kathy and I, we have determined, you know, we've been shrinking, but not in height. We've been shrinking around the belly and, and other, other places. We've been shrinking because we got determined to just do something about our weight. And so we've been sticking strictly to this uh, low-carb diet with Tom, Tom and Gil talks about. Thank you, Tom and Gil. And so... I've lost 22 pounds, and I think Kathy's lost 21. And uh, and and we, our clothes are are getting are getting where they won't fit. Fortunately, Kathy has some, some of her old clothes, but I, it's been over 30 years since I've been this weight, so I didn't have any other clothes. So I had to buy, go buy me some jeans because all my jeans were real baggy, and all like this is the smallest of these Hawaiian shirts I've got. All my other ones are real baggy on me. Kathy said they look like tents on you, so. I guess I won't be wearing those as much anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now look, Romans chapter 2, start with verse 6. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing, as living right. That's right, seek for glory and honor, they will receive immortality and eternal life. To them, but to them who are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. I'm glad that I'm not going to receive wrath. God's not got wrath for me. Because I'm walking holy in Jesus. The Bible says we should live holy. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, yes, which is your reasonable service. Thank you, Lord. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove was that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Thank you, Lord. That transform, that word transform is a Greek word metamorphu. And it's, it's where we get the word metamorphosis from in the English. And it literally means like a, a, like a, a worm that crawls in, makes a, catu, a cocoon around itself. It transforms into a butterfly. That's metamorphosis. We're to be metamorphosized <laughs> by renewing our minds with Amen. the Word of God. Thank you, Lord. We need to put on the mind of Christ. Yes. We need to do what the Word says to do. Jesus came to, not to destroy the law, but to fulfill it so we truly can walk as a child of God. Yes. We are heirs of God, Amen. joint heirs of Jesus Thank Christ. You, Lord. Jesus Christ is in us. And he's there to strengthen us. He's there to help us. He's there to empower us. He's there to lead us, to guide us, to direct us by his Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Oh, Father God, I just pray Glory to God. Thank you, that Father. this message today, Father, just gets down into us, Father. Help us, Lord, to walk in your ways. Help us to, to submit ourselves to you. I thank you, Lord, that you are mighty God. I thank you, you do and strengthen us to give us all the strength we need Amen. to do whatever you have us to do. I give you glory and praise. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I hope y'all got something out of that. Glory. It's good.